He was a sick-minded individual, dangerous individual. The man responsible for four women's deaths and disappearances will never see the light of day outside of a jail cell. Edna Suttles was last seen driving her Jeep Grand Cherokee near her home on August 27, 2021, right before the 81-year-old vanished. She was in the company of a man police now suspect murdered her, and we're wondering if the predator is a serial killer. On the morning of August 27, 2021, Edna Suttles left her home for the last time. When she failed to make an appointment, family and friends became concerned and they contacted police who immediately initiated an investigation. I, th I think in part using her age to escalate the priority of the call. Near well, hey folks, welcome to Profiling Evil and this episode on missing persons. And this one a murder case that's now been solved. I hope you'll take a moment, hit that like and subscribe button, ring the bell, and make sure you're getting all of our notifications. Now, this episode was recorded more than a year ago. It's part of our missing person series that we were asked to look into. And we Nearly a week would pass before solid leads started coming in. That's when her 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee was discovered parked at a Best Western hotel about six and a half miles south of her home. It was September 3rd. The temperatures were still in the 90s, and think about that, folks. That heavy South Carolina humidity was intensifying the heat. Once law enforcement focused on the area of her vehicle's recovery, they started examining all of the CCTV footage in the area. That's the closed circuit TV cameras, the security cameras on buildings and businesses and residents. And as they looked at that footage, they began to see a picture unfolding of what really happened. Investigators recovered footage that dated back to August 27th. Remember, that's the day that Edna disappeared. But it was something that they saw about seven minutes before Edna pulled into a Food Lion grocery store that really intrigued detectives. Now, the Food Lion was directly behind that hotel where her car was later found. A man, who was later identified as Daniel Prince, pulled into the parking lot in a silver Chevrolet Cruze. It was exactly 9.22 a.m. when he parked his car, got out, and walked into the store. He spent a couple of minutes there, but the interior cameras recorded him as he walked through the store, picking up and purchasing a package of yogurt. <laughs> this is important, so remember that, a package of yogurt. Well, as Prince was exiting the store, Edna Suttles was pulling into the parking lot, and she found a spot and parked her car. That's where Prince approached her. Didn't seem aggressive, very casual, and it was about 9.27 in the morning. They had a short discussion, and then Prince walked over to his own vehicle, and he grabbed a small bag from inside of his vehicle, and he walked back to Suttles' Jeep. Now think about that. What was inside that small bag? What was the purpose for them meeting? This guy opens the passenger door to her car and climbs into the front seat. There didn't look to be like any distress going on, and Edna Suttles drove the pair away from the parking lot. Now, we can assume, based on other evidence that will unfold, that it was presumably toward her home. So let's explore what's going on here and what we're learning from nonverbal behavior for a few minutes. We talk a lot about behavior. And when we talk about behavior in a criminal perspective, we talk about it in three ways. Verbal behavior, the, the things you and I say to each other, the things, things that a predator will say to a victim, or, this is interesting, force the victim to say to the predator. It all plays into the fantasy that's going on in the predator's mind. So we have verbal behavior. We have nonverbal behavior. Things like a scowl or a, a closed fist or pointing a gun all send a strong message, but it's nonverbal. 
And then we have sexual behavior that comes out in these kinds of cases, the way in which some of these crimes unfold. As we think about what happened in that parking lot, can we begin to theorize about the potential relationship or the purpose for these two meeting in the parking lot? You know, whenever I see situations like this, I find myself wondering why two very different people would come together in a singular place and time. Did these two know each other? Had they somehow created a relationship online? And I'll tell you what, even though there was a 40-year difference in their age, there are weirder things that happen on the internet through dating online. So is that possible? Certainly possible. I don't think probable. But could it have been that there was a business negotiation going on? Could Suttles have been trying to sell her car? Could she have needed a repairman to come and do a little handyman work? That might account for why they meet and why they so comfortably join up together. Now, this is where guys might step into the picture. Because again, why would Suttles put him in her car and take her to his house rather than having him follow her? A simple guys might be, oh, my vehicle just broke down. How lucky I am that you uh, are here to meet me. Uh, we don't know the answer. But it, all of these verbal, nonverbal communications can tell us a lot about their relationship. When I look at these, I also find myself thinking about the plethora of con men that there are out there. I mean, was this guy one of them? I, I think we find out that he was later. Was his con or guys uh, to say, hey, I, my car is broken down or uh, let me jump in your car to go for a ride before I buy it or all kinds of things. Now, in my research, I discovered that Prince had formerly, perhaps even at the very moment that this crime occurred, worked for an insurance company in the area. Was it possible he was quoting a new policy for the woman? Was there some reason for him to come and maybe inspect her house? You know, I found something really interesting in his background as well. This guy had a number of former criminal charges against him, but one was for passing a false title. Now, did that have something to do with the vehicle and and uh, was Edna trying to sell it? I keep going back to that. And those are things that maybe some of you who are more intimate to this case can tell me. I hope that law enforcement knows the answer to that. But regardless, it appears that the meeting was arranged, that they came together in place and time pre-planned. There was no stress and she allowed him to get into her vehicle. So what do you think about this situation and what are the lessons that we can learn if we ever sell something ourselves online or we're put in a position where we have to meet a buyer or a seller of something? Heck, maybe we're trying to hire somebody to do work at our home. Again, that handyman idea. So think about that, folks, and think about your own level of risk. Are there ways that we can decrease the chance that an offender might be targeting us? that we could become victimized by somebody like this. Now, I'll tell you how you can learn more about how to reduce your victimization in just a minute, but I want you to keep this thing in mind because after the couple gets in the car, they leave the parking lot for nearly four hours. What on earth happened to Edna Suttles? Well, hey folks, I'm pausing to share some concerns I have surrounding identity theft and fraud. I've learned a lot from our partner, Aura. They're the pros at protecting people from cyber predators. Aura provides identity theft protection, credit and fraud protection, and online and device security for you and your family. They taught me to think twice before answering those online questionnaires designed to steal our personal information. You know, it must be working because U.S. statistics show that 33% of us have been victimized by identity theft at an annual cost of more than $56 billion each year. Our protection plans come with around-the-clock support, a money-back guarantee, and a million-dollar theft policy. But here's the best part. You can try Aura for free by clicking on this special Profiling Evil link in the description down below. When you do, we get a small commission. But think about it. You insure your car and you insure your house. 
don't you think it's time to ensure your identity? Now let's get back to today's discussion. The case really starts bugging me at this point. I mean, as if it wasn't already, but think about this. When Suttle's vehicle returns to the Food Lion parking lot nearly four hours later, Prince exits the vehicle from the driver's door. That's right, folks. Edna is no longer driving her car. Prince is driving her car. Now, once he exits the car, he walks across the parking lot and gets in his vehicle. He starts it up and he drives it over alongside Edna's Jeep, alongside the passenger door, I might admit, with the vehicle's passenger door uh, kind of facing each other. Is, is this creeping you out yet? I hope you're envisioning this in your mind. It was 2.02 p.m. when he opened her passenger door and his passenger door. Then this five foot eleven man who's pretty darn skinny, 125 pounds, pulls Edna from the vehicle and puts her into his car. Now, according to the arrest affidavit, Edna is unable to support herself, and he has to actually carry her, perhaps even carry a lifeless figure as he makes the transfer. This left the investigator that submitted the arrest warrant wondering if she was under the influence of a drug or if she was even alive. Now, do you recall me talking about the purchase of the yogurt by Prince earlier? I'm teasing you a little bit. But just keep that picture in your mind as we talk about it more in just a minute. But after he transfers Edna to his vehicle, Prince drove Edna's car back over to the Best Western Hotel parking lot. And then he does something really significant. And again, this is maybe some uh, nonverbal behavior and certainly evidence in this case. He spends a considerable amount of time wiping down the interior and the exterior of Suttle's vehicle. Now, why on earth is he doing that? Uh, We can theorize that he's trying to remove any DNA, any signal, any sign that he was ever in that vehicle, and perhaps anything that would suggest something that explained why Suttle was abducted. Now, once completed, he walked back over to the food lion, got into his vehicle, And there, with what appears to be a motionless Edna Suttles, he drives off to an unknown location. I want to just take a moment and look at a map, retracing the important locations in this case. First, let's think about this. Prince and Suttles come together in the Food Lion parking lot just before they make the six and a half mile drive back to her residence. Now, In criminal investigations, we consider this to be the initial contact area. But in reality, I wonder if that initial contact area happened to be the internet or a phone call, or maybe they met in the past. But for this particular crime spree, that's the initial contact spot. Then, after nearly four hours, they return to the food lion. That's where they permanently make this transfer and she permanently disappears in Prince's vehicle. Now, on this map, I've also plotted out where Prince's home was. Think about the incredible amount of, of uh, locations that Edna's body could be disposed of, the other crime scene. Th- this one is a tricky case. And frankly, we haven't even talked about the crime scene itself because there are multiple crime scenes in this case. Perhaps that first crime scene was at Edna's apartment. The second may have been the moment when he transfers her to his car. The third might be an undisclosed location where an assault occurs or something else happens, and then her, and then the murder occurs. And then another location might be a disposal site where her body is finally uh, laid to, uh, and, and disposed of. What do you folks think happened during that four-hour period of time? Again, I'm going to be looking for your comments down below. Let's talk about the rest of this story. You see, police had enough information from the video and the physical evidence at Edna's car and her home to get a search warrant for Daniel Prince's home. There, they found items belonging to Edna inside a bee box. Now, I'm assuming that that's a beehive box. You've seen them, those 
white, most often three foot by two foot boxes that you see out in fields for people who are harvesting honey as a business or for themselves. Now, this box was near a tree. And it's really quite miraculous that police had enough common sense to go over and look inside of it. I'm sure that Prince thought the fear of a bee sting would keep curious eyes away, but it didn't work. Now, that's not all that was found. They also discovered other key pieces of evidence during the investigation. That evidence that showed uh, that he had kept items of Edna's subtles. In some cases, we call these trophies. Other times, it's maybe functional if they keep a cash or a wallet or something. Now, there was one more thing that was really important, though. During the investigation, they recovered a yogurt bottle that was used and empty. When they had the lab test it, it contained tranquilizer medications. Now, are you seeing this case come together like I am? (laughs) And by the way, that's not all they found. They found the identification and personal items of another missing woman. This woman is out of Charlotte, and uh, it led to a series of interviews with Prince, who reportedly admitted that he killed and buried a number of people. (laughs) What are you? Can you believe this? I mean, how many? And my investigation shows that it's, it's probably looking like at least four people. But Prince quit talking to police when they zoned in and asked him about where Edna's body could be found. In fact, he told investigators he could lead them within three feet of where her, she was laying. But then he changed his mind and asked for an attorney. You know, I found myself theorizing that Edna Suttles could likely be the victim of a serial killer. And that searching for a body in the water, now that we know that the vehicle was recovered and a little more about the suspect in this case, could be a waste of resources. For- but it is an important case to share with you, the listeners. Edna Suttles deserves to have her story told. And this woman deserves justice. Now, my hope is that Daniel Prince will eventually reveal where Edna Suttles is buried. You know, I think if and when he does, that several other victims are also going to be recovered at the same time. Uh, I've often found that previous predatory behavior is predictive of future predatory behavior. If Prince truly has buried three others before Edna, I'm quite sure that she probably met with the same type of disposal she most likely is buried. Well, as you clearly can tell, the suspect in this case was a guy named Prince. He ended up being sentenced to life in prison in South Carolina. His name, Daniel Glenn Prince. And maybe you can look him up and learn a little bit more about him and some of the things. But here's the thing we know. He did, in fact, murder Edna Suttles. He actually admitted to kidnapping her the day they met at the food line. And it took police a while to get this guy to admit where he had buried her. The details were all released in a plea agreement that I've got playing down the side of the screen here. And you can take time and go back and watch that or read through that in its entirety by pausing and and looking through that. So I'm going to continue to let that play. But here's the deal. The killer on May 16th of 2022, so almost a year ago, took investigators to the place where he put her body after he murdered her. Uh, Police learned that this predator also murdered three other women. There may be more. I suspect there probably is. He killed Nancy Rigo, Dolores Sellers, and Lee Goodman. Let's watch this video from the local news. Some other news tonight. We've learned the substate woman who vanished from Traveler's Rest about eight months ago, well, she has been found, her body found in Rutherfordton, North Carolina. Her name is Edna Suttles, and she was reported missing back in August. Now, right now, the feds have said not said how she died, but we did receive federal documents a few weeks ago alleging several of her items were found on the property of a man who lived near where her body was found. Fox Carolina's Brooklyn Krilmer in Western North Carolina for us tonight, breaking down this case and its connection to that man who allegedly confessed to killing several people. 
A trail of evidence first led investigators to Daniel Prince's home in Rutherford County back in September. One month earlier, Edna Suttles disappeared. A federal search warrant unsealed in March outlines what happened the morning she went missing. According to the documents, Suttles met Prince at a Food Lion parking lot in Traveler's Rest on the morning of August 27th. Surveillance footage shows Prince in the front passenger seat of Suttles' Jeep. The two leave together a short time later. Later that afternoon, surveillance footage captures Prince moving a motionless Suttles to his car, then driving off. A week later, Greenville County deputies found Suttles' car at the Best Western Hotel in TR. When searching Prince's property on Kaiser Road in Rutherford County, investigators found Suttles' purse, car keys, and other belongings hidden in a beekeeping box. On Monday, the eight-month search ended here about 15 miles from Prince's property when investigators found Edna Suttles' body in a wooded area off of Harris Holly Springs Road in Forest City, North Carolina. As the investigation unfolded over the past eight months, investigators also linked Prince to another missing woman. According to a search warrant, law enforcement also found items belonging to Nancy Rigo on Prince's property. She disappeared from Charlotte in 2017. While in custody, Prince has confessed to killing multiple people, but no specific names have been disclosed. Well, the sheriff of Greenville County didn't pull any punches when he declared Prince a serial killer. The U.S. attorney, though, had some more distinct words to say, and I want to quote him. Quote, Prince is a monster who had a long history of targeting, kidnapping, and killing women, causing unimaginable loss to his victims and their families. He's earned every day of his sentence, and our communities are safer with him in a prison cell. We're grateful that the court delivered justice today. That was the day he was sentenced, and we hope it provides some form of measure for the victim's families. Well, I thought you might be interested in a couple of the comments by people involved in the case. So let's just look at this little news clip as well. Yeah, Tori, well, we're learning more about the four women who Prince killed. Law enforcement describing him as a, quote, serial killer who preyed on older women. He is a serial killer. I made no mistake about it. Greenville County Sheriff Hobart Lewis not mincing words when describing Daniel Prince. He was a sick-minded individual, dangerous individual. Prince beginning his life sentence this week as the Greenville County Sheriff's Office, Rutherford County Sheriff's Office, FBI, and U.S. Attorney's Office spoke out about this bizarre case for the first time. Because of the cooperation between these law enforcement partners, the man responsible for four women's deaths and disappearances will never see the light of day outside of a jail cell. Prosecutors say Prince kidnapped multiple women, stole money from some of them, even pretended to be at least two of them online, and ultimately admitted he was involved in the death of four women. But it was the missing persons case of Edna Suttles from Traveler's Rest last year that law enforcement says helped break this case open. The investigators, the deputies that arrived on scene, the initial deputies that took the report, uh, the law enforcement that found her vehicle at the hotel had all those things not happened or one piece of those not happened. Yeah, we wouldn't probably be having this press conference right now. Wouldn't even know who we was dealing with. The remains of Suttles were found last month in Rutherford County. She was energetic with bright blonde hair, reminding family members of music icon Dolly Parton. Other victims of Prince include Lee Goodman, mom of four who loved the beach, Dolores Sellers, a mom of two who loved to sing, and Sellers' daughter, Nancy Rigo, who is remembered by her infectious laugh. There is no more serious offense than taking the life of another, and yesterday's life sentence was a small measure of justice for these families. So what are your thoughts on this one, folks? I hope you'll take time to enter your thoughts down below. Uh, thankfully, this is a predator that has been taken off the street. The judge wasn't just satisfied enough with a life sentence. He also added five additional years if this guy somehow gets released. And we've seen it happen before. So make sure you're putting your comments below. Read over each other's comments and respond to each other. And please hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell so you're getting all of our videos. And consider joining Profiling Evil's channel memberships. 
My favorite is the Academy level, and we've released 16 new videos that are only available to those of you who are channel members. So check it out. And if you like podcasts, make sure you're checking out Profiling Evil Podcasts on your favorite podcast platform. You know, you can find Profiling Evil on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So please check us out there. But most of all, thanks for your support of Profiling Evil. We'll see you all soon at the next crime scene.